Finally, we get to what was the most requested FCS conference. It's based in the western states where the sky is big apparently. I would have thought the sky would be biggest in the flatter parts of the country, but I guess not. Anyway, we're not here for the sky, we're here for the ground. The stadiums in particular. So here are the big sky conference football stadiums. Alex G. Spanos Stadium, Cal Poly San Luis Mustangs. Straight away you can tell that this conference is going to have some interesting stadiums. The architecture here is noticeably different from most football stadiums. It mimics the Spanish inspired architecture that's common in the area. But perhaps the most interesting aspect of this stadium is that they ran out of room and had to build the press boxes over the top of a road. But if you are sitting up there, and in the higher up seats, you'll be treated with a pretty scenic view of the nearby mountains. It's going to be pretty hard to top this one, but let's see. Bobcat Stadium, Montana State Bobcats. Okay, this one's a bit more in line with your typical college stadium. I guess you could call the design a disjointed horseshoe. The main stand does however have an interesting look to it, particularly the exterior. I don't know what they were going for, it's certainly not Spanish inspired, but I like it. That interesting shape can be seen from the inside as well, atop the press boxes. The stadium's located nearly a mile above sea level, but it's not even the highest in the conference as you'll see later on. Not even the second highest. Hillsboro Stadium, Portland State Vikings. Not to be confused with the iconic home of Sheffield Wednesday. But then again, it is attached to a minor league baseball stadium, so I think that sets it apart enough. It's the only stadium in the conference that doesn't have seating along both sidelines. Instead, there are some baseball diamonds. This whole place is probably as multi-purpose as it gets. One thing it does have going for it is plenty of covered seating. It's a pretty cool looking roof as well. And it probably comes in handy in Portland. Holt Arena, Idaho State Bengals. The exterior design consists of an arched tin roof that pretty much comes all the way down to the ground for the most part. The simplicity of the design is indicative of its age. It is after all the second oldest dome football stadium, behind the stubborn as a mule Astrodome, which of course makes it the oldest in college football. On the inside, you might be surprised to see that the field runs the opposite way that a basketball arena with an arched roof would. So the ceiling is very low behind each end zone. It certainly makes for an interesting look, as does the colour combination of those chairback seats, which definitely look like they're from a different era. Hornet Stadium, Sacramento State Hornets. This stadium has the honourable distinction of being the first stadium in the US to host a Canadian Football League game. It was home to the Sacramento Gold Miners, but that gold rush didn't last very long. When I first saw this stadium, I thought each of the stands had some sort of black cladding that made up the facade, which would have been pretty cool. But it turns out it's, uh, bed sheets, I guess. Also, does that name ring any bells? He was a billionaire that donated to several institutions in the state. The stadium unfortunately has a track, as do many in this conference, but at least it looks a little different than usual. Kibbe Dome, Idaho Vandals. What do you get when you add five or so years of technological advancements to Holt Arena? Eh, a bit of a higher arch, some side entrances. Yeah, it's quite similar from the outside. Just looks a tad better in my view. On the inside, however, you'll notice that the field is aligned the way you'd expect it to be, which allows for these translucent panels behind each end, which aren't quite windows, but let in plenty of light, which I'm always a fan of. They weren't an original feature, Actually, I should mention that this was originally an outdoor stadium, with the roof added about four years after it opened. I like to think that it's because the neighbours told them to keep it down, but no, if there's one thing I know about Moscow is that it gets quite cold. And Vladimir Putin lives here for some reason. Nottingham Field, or maybe it's Nottingham Field. One thing we do know is that it's Nottingham Field. Ugh. Northern Colorado Bears. On the surface, it's a very simple design, and yeah, there's not as much to talk about as there was at the last one. But I think it's one of those stadiums that's greater than the sum of its parts. There is, however, some nice brickwork on either side, a little bit of a pond to the south, some nice landscaping, as well as plenty of foliage about the place. Very pleasant. 
Ruse Field, Eastern Washington Eagles. What's black and white and red all over? That's right, a newspaper. And if you read a local newspaper 10 or so years ago, you may have stumbled upon an article that detailed Eastern Washington's plans to replace their natural turf field with what appears to be a portal to hell. Out of all the oddly coloured fields, it is certainly the most eye-catching. I still like the teal of coastal Carolinas the most, but to each their own. This stadium does of course have a track, but if you do want a closer view, I guess you could sit behind one of the end zones, where they often make use of temporary seating that is placed on top of the track. Stewart Stadium, Weber State Wildcats. I said it was going to be hard to top Cal Poly Stadium, and overall, no, this one probably doesn't. But when it comes to the scenery, I think this one's got it covered. It sits at the base of Mount Ogden. Is the town named after the mountain, or vice versa? That's just one of those mysteries that we will never know the answer to. Other than the view, there's not a whole lot to this stadium, although I do like how the eastern stand is built into the earth because that's basically where the mountain starts. UC Davis Health Stadium, UC Davis Aggies. It's the newest stadium in the conference and it does seem very well designed. Quite a clean look inside and out. And I love the combination of a sunken field with grass berms at each end, as well as a 360 degree concourse up top, which is not a very common combination at all. Not only does it look good in my opinion, but I believe they park food trucks and whatnot up there on game day, so you can still watch the action on the field while in line for a taco. Oh, and I'd just like to point out the name of the county that this stadium is in. I know it's not really relevant, but YOLO. Walk Up Sky Dome, NAU Lumberjacks. It's quite a domey conference, but not the domiest. The Walk Up Sky Dome has an appropriate name because if I'm not mistaken, it's the highest dome stadium in the world, at 1.3 miles or 2.1 kilometrons above sea level. Unlike the two we saw earlier on, it is a true dome, which is pretty impressive when you consider that the support structure is made of wood, and you can see how they went about it. As you probably learned at school, the triangle is the strongest shape there is. Although, I'm a bit skeptical. Have you tried dipping Doritos in salsa? That's a delicate operation. The ceiling does actually look pretty cool, it's like a work of art, as is the stadium as a whole I suppose. Washington Grizzly Stadium, Montana Grizzlies, huh? That's confusing, but it is of course named after a donor, Dennis Washington, and the Grizzly part is, yeah, you get the point. The stadium is held in very high regard, at least by the people that leave comments on this channel. And I see what they mean, not only is the design very cutting edge, with that very interesting seating behind the north end zone and its sizable video screen. But on top of all that, it's surrounded by some incredible mountains. This one is Mount Jumbo. It has a big L. Presumably that stands for elephant. And then you have the self-titled University Mountain over here with its big M, which presumably stands for Montana, but maybe Missoula. Definitely not mountain. Eccles Coliseum. Southern Utah Thunderbirds. From the bird's eye view, it looks like your standard horseshoe stadium, but it's far from it. It's called the Coliseum, but the architecture seems to mimic the Pantheon, with a couple of obelisks thrown in for good measure. It's not just the man-made stuff that's easy on the eye, but it being Utah, the view that those sitting on the western side get is quite stunning. They're not just regular mountains, but they're colorful. I definitely do think that a stadium like this would have been so much better without the track though. The Thunderbirds will actually be leaving this conference next season. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.